So we got this pit bull pack of puppies right here. And we're gonna use this opportunity to talk about one of the most common things that we get asked about when it comes to puppies, which is how do we stop them from puppy biting? And that's the incorrect way to go about it. So typically a dog gets rehomed at around eight or nine weeks old. These guys are nine weeks old right now. And that's about halfway through their bite inhibition process where they learn if it's okay or not okay to bite things and how hard it's okay to use their mouth. What we mean by that is that about until they're about 16 weeks old, they're exploring with their mouths. They're trying to figure out how much power they should put in. And that's almost why dogs, these little dogs have really sharp teeth so that if they, they do go too hard, even with their weak jaws, then it will hurt and the other puppies will communicate, hey, that was too hard, you can't bite me like that. And they'll learn how to bite lighter because they want to use their mouths and communicate with their mouths, but not harm the thing that they're trying to bite when they're playing with their siblings. If I'm taking this dog away at eight weeks through a 16 week process, then now I am my dog's pack and I need to teach them. I can't just redirect these dogs to a toy because the toy is not going to give them any feedback. They can bite that toy as hard as they can. And it's never going to tell them, ow. So if I have these dogs and I am now their pack, I want to teach them how hard is too hard. And I also can't create a game accidentally where I teach them that they bite me and I go, ugh, ugh. And now I'm this shaky thing that they want to attack because that's a fun game. It's novel. You created a memory of, ooh, that was fun. I did something, you reacted, and I got joy from it. I'm going to continue to do it. So the, oh, they bit me and I go, ow, and stuff like that. That's not, that's not what we want to do. I want to, if they're biting me lightly and everything, actually pretty much ignore it and just engage with the dog. And if they go too hard, and they go in a in a motion that hurts me or too intense, then I'm going to do a negative marker. So for my negative marker, I go, ah, ah. So I have a, nope, I don't want you to do that anymore. And then I just like remove them from the situation. So if they're a young puppy, I'll just like turn them around and pet them like this if I want them to stop. I'm not creating a memory of, oh, you did that and I reacted this way and they might find that fun. That might be a game for them that they want to encourage. You're indirectly teaching them to bite you if you're doing that sort of stuff. I want to let them do their things. I'm petting. I'm completely ignoring. If they go too hard, I give them the negative marker, and then I make them not do it anymore by just having control. I can get up and walk away from the dog. I like to just have the dog face away from me and go, and I'm purposefully strategizing this to not create a memory of doing the thing that I don't want you to do because of the novelty that I'm bringing with it. So when I have puppies, I got to remember that if I'm taking them away from their pack, then I am now their pack and I have to teach them the things that their pack would teach them. So these dogs are biting and tackling each other. And if they go too hard, then the other one will get really upset at them and go super hard. And that's why they know how hard they should go. So these dogs I've had for about 10 days now, and they know one, how to bite me really nicely when they do, but also they only use their mouths with me about 30% of the time we engage with them. And that's because I, I don't have this like novel reaction to them engaging me with their mouth. They're doing it when it's, when it's instinctual and they have the craving to use their mouths to engage. But also, if they don't, they'll lay down and let me pet them. And they don't have the, I need to engage with my mouth with you because we haven't built a relationship off of that. Things that people do to accidentally build a relationship is they, ah, and pull and make it this novel experience. They have, you know, their shoelaces out. So they go for the shoelaces and it's, ah, stop, stop, stop. I'm creating a game accidentally that my dog is going to continue for entertainment purposes. But if I strategize, I'm conscious of, I'm not going to do things that are novel. I'm not going to do things that are going to go, ooh, that was fun. I'm going to do that again. And instead, I'm going to have a very clear, you know, I'm tough. These teeth are going, they're not that bad. If I want to remove their, their mouth, I'm just going to go behind wherever it is and then just remove it. 
it's not that big of a deal. If I want them to stop doing it, I'll just kind of pick them up and do something like this and pet them. Yeah, they might try and go, but like, I'm, an, I'm a human. This is a dog. I can control it, even if it's 16 weeks old instead of nine weeks old. And we're going to do those motions and be adult about it, not be like, I'm a victim and these dogs are attacking me. Oh my gosh. I'm tough. I'm strong. I'm in control. And I can make this happen without teaching my dog to attack me via novelty. Good job, baby boy. Yeah. Hi, guys. So this is the beginning of week 14 for Flash here. And this is our final update on our puppy biting series, where we are going to see if this puppy has the need or even the really thought of biting me, interacting with my hands in that sort of way. So these are kind of the results. We still have uh, him and Tucker, and neither one of them really think about hands in that like play bitey attack sort of way because the only interaction that we've had with that is like if they want to kind of like chew on us sort of thing, if they're light about it, we, we didn't make any noise or anything and we just kind of let them do their thing. And then once they went too hard, we just pulled our hand out. We just stopped them by moving, moving on, moving them, all of that kind of stuff. And since we never let them have like a core memory, I can really do whatever with my hands and he doesn't associate them as tools to bite and get that sort of sensation, he just is like, okay, what are you doing? You're being weird right now, dad, sort of thing. He really, at the end of this development, has learned that hands are not something that he plays with, like a toy or a stick or something, and he would just rather, you know, get pet and work for me and do lure stuff. That's how he associates the hands with the training and with uh, love, affection, all of that kind of stuff, looking to them for direction, not as things that he should be biting. So he's at the end of his development. If he was still biting and sometimes getting like those hard owl bites sort of thing at 16 weeks, so, you know, another two weeks from now, then we would start doing things to make that not happen and set him up for success. But if you do it right, you're going to have just, they're not... I can mess with his crazy and stuff, and he's not gonna he's not gonna think to bite me because he doesn't have that core memory of oh sometimes I bite, sometimes he yanks away, sometimes that's fun. I hope this helped. I hope you guys get similar reactions. If you take your dog away at eight weeks old, you have two months of you are the pack and you need to teach them what their pack would teach them if they could stay with them for the entire 16 weeks that biologically they should be if they were, you know, still wolves or a wild dog pack, that's the result that they would get with them. So you need to do it with you. We strategize, we'll communicate uh, uh, if he goes too hard and we go, but we're not pulling away, we're tough. If he bites my hand and it hurts, he's not gonna hurt me. I'm not a victim of this puppy. We just need to communicate correctly and we will just not even have to deal with puppy biting. It's not gonna be a thing that changes my life whatsoever. It's not gonna be a thing that changes my dog's life. But if I did do it wrong and I would ah, ah, then one, he would still be wanting to interact with my hands in that way. And two, he would not learn bite inhibition because he never experienced biting nicely. If I only gave him a toy this entire time, he bids me, I redirect on a toy. Then that toy's not gonna tell him when he goes too hard. He's four months old, eight months old, one year old, it doesn't really matter. He bites on a kid too hard. He breaks the skin because he didn't realize how hard he was going. That's the issue when it comes to not teaching your dog bite inhibition traits correctly. It's not just oh, my dog is going to be mouthy for a longer period of time. It's It can have real negative consequences that can result in your dog being euthanized. So do it right. You got an eight-week-old puppy. Don't have those core memories. Be tough. If it, if it uh, hurts you, you can either remove yourself and just not make it a factor, or you can pick the dog up, start petting it to where it can't really get at you. If it's still trying to get at you, it's because you are creating a core memory and you're doing something wrong. So uh, I hope that helps. And uh, we're really happy with these uh, puppies and the result that they had going through this process.